Hello everybody, my name is John Condit. Um, I am a songwriter and guitarist based here in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I play with my band called The Inscape. Um, and this video we're going to do, uh, I'm calling it an intro to Psych. Um, so this is going to be just kind of a uh, real uh, skimming of the surface of some classic psychedelic albums. Um, we're going to go all the way from, <clears throat> excuse me, the foundations uh, in the mid-60s all the way to some more modern albums. And <clears throat> for those of you that are uh, more in tune with the psych world, uh, you know, you <laughs> do keep in mind this is nearly scratching the surface. This video is just for those of you that um, are maybe intrigued about this style of music and want to dive in. Um, in my opinion, this is a good place to start with that. Um, so here we go. Uh, the very first album that I chose being uh, from the band that first called their music psychedelic music is uh, the 13th Floor Elevators from Austin, Texas. Uh, this album, here you go, is appropriately named uh, The Psychedelic Sounds of the 13th Floor Elevators. Uh, now this came around in about 1966. Um, so, you know, you can tell it's been, a, this record uh, is over, is 50 years old now. Pretty amazing. And uh, people are still being influenced by it today. Uh, uh, being released at about the same time in San Francisco, uh, this is a band called Moby Grape. Um, this is their very first album. Um, they were kind of one of the first bands to uh, put San Francisco on the map for the music scene. And um, they have an interesting story. Uh, definitely worth looking up. And uh, do keep in mind for these uh, these records, I'm not going to dive too deep into their history if you'd like to learn more. Uh, you know, there's always great wiki articles and, and things to learn about them. Um, a definite classic psych album. I'm sure a lot of you have seen the cover for this. Uh, we have The Beatles, Sgt. Peppers. Uh, definitely a great album. Um, you know, this was... The Beatles had definitely released a lot more material uh, before that album, but it definitely uh, put psychedelic music on the map uh, for the pop culture world, for sure. And uh, being recorded just down the hallway when Sgt. Pepper's was being recorded, um, we have Pink Floyd's first album. Uh, this album is called Piper at the Gates of Dawn, uh, and it features... Uh, the founder of Pink Floyd, Sid Barrett. Uh, David Gilmour was actually not an original member. Um, Sid Barrett has a very interesting story. I'm a huge fan of him personally. Uh, definitely worth looking up and definitely an album worth listening to. Uh, very heavy and wild, um, especially in, in that era of, of psych music in its uh, infantile state. Um, here's another classic album uh, out of San Francisco, a band called Jefferson Airplane. Um, I'm sure many of you have heard the song White Rabbit. Uh, that is the record that features it. It's called Surrealistic Pillow. Um, here, I'll hold it up one more time. You can get a good look at that. Uh, this is actually Jefferson Airplane's second album, uh, but the very first album to feature Grace Slick on it, who was their, their famed female front woman. Um, also from San Francisco, I love this album a lot. It's a little bit of a deep cut, but I think it's a really cool intro to psych music. Um, this is a band called Country Joe and the Fish. Um, this album is called Electric Music for Mind and Body. And uh, as you can see on the cover there, it's got photos of oil projections from the Fillmore. So definitely an indication of its psychedelic nature. Uh, didn't really chart at all or have any hits, but uh, a, a cool a cool intro to the San Francisco world for sure. Um, you know, if you listen to that with the Moby Grape album and the Jefferson Airplane album, it gives you a sense of kind of 
the bands that were happening in San Francisco at the time. Um, and then just down, down California, uh, in LA, I like this album a lot. Uh, this is a band called Spirit. Um, I love this album a lot. It, the, I think the, the, I'm trying to think what the single, I think the single on this was Mechanical World. Uh, the fame to this album is the song Taurus, which is said to inspire Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven. Uh, you listen to the song, find out. Uh, I think so. I like Randy California, the guitar player, a lot. Uh, also, a little bit of a deeper cut, <clears throat> but I think that's a really cool intro to psych music. Especially uh, coming from the L.A. scene, you know, where uh, L.A. was known for a lot more um, produced and, and uh, sparkly sounds. Uh, and then um, another classic album. Here we have Jimi Hendrix's first album. Uh, this is called Are You Experienced? Uh, this is the, the album that has Purple Haze, Hey Joe, a uh, bunch of hits on it. Uh, very classic album and I don't, you know there's not much to say about Hendrix he's great uh, also uh, this is a uh, another famed guitar player Eric Clapton's band this was Cream uh, this is Disraeli Gears this is uh, the classic album with Sunshine of Your Love on it um, a bunch of other great songs definitely a psychedelic album cover for sure uh, one of my favorite albums, and definitely a good intro to psychedelic sounds, and and just really influential guitar playing. But that's a whole nother video <laughs> from me. Um, about the same time as Disraeli Gears came out, I, I think that was about 1968. Uh, I I gotta double check my sources my sources on that one. So leave a comment below if I'm wrong on that one, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, out of Germany, I think this is a really cool intro to psych music. Uh, do keep in mind, this is my opinion. Um, we have Tago Mago. This is a band called Can. Um, Can has recently started be to become easier to find out about with a lot of represses and the digital age, but uh, Took me a little while to find out about them when I was a little younger. Uh, this album is really, really cool. Uh, pretty far out there, so keep that in mind, but it, it's really got some cool songs on it. Uh, so that was kind of my portion for, you know, about the uh, mid-60s to early 70s. I think Tago Mago was about 1970 or 69. Um, I'm going to jump ahead. I know... Don't hate me for this. Um, there was some good psych music out of the 80s. Uh, it wasn't as much in the limelight, though, so I'm not going to keep it in this intro to psych video uh, that digs a little deeper. But there was a scene at L.A. called the Paisley Underground. Uh, pretty cool stuff to research. Check that out. Uh, we're going to go all the way up to the 90s here. Uh, this is a classic band. I love this band a lot. Uh, the Brian Jonestown Massacre. Uh, this album is called Take It From The Man. Uh, this is one of three albums that were released in a single year by uh, the BJM, as we like to call them. Uh, this is probably one of their, they're probably one of their most famous albums, I'd say. It's tough to say because they've released so much material, and, and once you get into the band, there's there's a lot to, to find out. Um, going ahead, Head to the early 2000s, uh, a band you're probably hearing from a lot. They, they're playing a lot more festivals. Uh, the Black Angels. Uh, this is their first EP. Uh, they have a lot more material than, than that. But uh, check out the Black Angels. Definitely a band worth listening to as far as, especially as modern psychedelia goes. They are really bringing uh, the classic sounds to the modern world, uh, really doing cool stuff. Um, another favorite band of mine out of the modern psych era, uh, this is definitely more heavy, uh, like, I don't know, I guess you can almost call it stoner rock or, uh, you know, heavy psych. We have Dead Meadow. Uh, this is their first album. Uh, I think this is a good place to start. If, if I was going to 
if I was going to give you one dead metal record to check out, this would be the one. Uh, they're self-titled. Uh, every song is just really great. Um, and then to wrap it up, uh, I'm not taking it all the way up here to, tw um, but fairly close in the last decade. Uh, this is an album that I, when I heard it, I was kind of like, okay, I think modern psychedelia is really, you know, going to start becoming more and more popular in, in the limelight. Um, this is a band uh, called Caribou, uh, and this is their album Andorra. Uh, this album, you know, ranges all the way from it has electronic elements to very sunshine 60s pop sounds, and it, it's a really cool listen. I, I highly suggest this album, and you know, when a, a friend showed that album to me, and, and so I always try and pass it on too, because I think it's really amazing. Um, so that's my, that's my intro to Psychedelia. Uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment below. Uh, let me know if you liked my choices on albums. If you didn't, um, obviously, like I said, this was skimming the surface. So this is just, just a good place to start. Um, and I'll, I'll list the albums below too, so you can research them and listen to them on Spotify or uh, wherever you listen to music at. Um, but yeah, like, leave a comment, subscribe, um, and I'll hopefully be putting up videos soon. Um, in the meantime, uh, watch my newest music video from my band, The Inscape, uh, for our song Back Home. And uh, I will hopefully be making a new video soon. Let me know what you want to see. Uh, thank you.